Hello, welcome back to these are a few of my favorite things. So today I have a bison hide that we're going to be working on. And this hide was just skinned yesterday. Um, I wish I had had a chance to get to flushing it yesterday, but I didn't get it until late evening. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to flush it today. So for my first step, what I'm going to do is go ahead and wash it. Um, this is the... Um, the sled that I've been using for washing my hides. I really love it because it's big and it makes it easy to just get them really clean really easily and then um, we can move them on without too much effort. Also I really like it because it's handy for moving around these heavy hides when I'm doing um, hides by myself. Having the sled to drag them around makes it a lot more, yeah, less labor intensive. <laughs> So let's get started on this hide. So I don't really do anything special when I'm washing my hides. Um, I like to use a natural dish soap. Usually I use something like 7th generation. It helps to cut the grease and yeah, it's a good low environmental impact way to get your hides nice and clean. Um, usually what I'll do is I'll run water into the tub with the hide like I'm doing right now and then when the hide is just about submerged. I will go ahead and come in and um, get some soap in there. And I like to do it kind of in one of the deeper parts of it where there's more water and I like to spray the hose into the soap so it gets dispersed in there. There's not big clumps of soap in your hair. This hide is a little stinky, which I'm bummed about. It was pretty warm yesterday. So hopefully we can get it flushed out pretty quick, get some salt on there, and arrest any bacteria that's trying to get in there and kind of erode what we're doing. So as you can see, I've got my hide and some water. I've got some soap in there with it. Today I'm using uh, doTERRA On Guard Cleaner Concentrate. Uh, I really like using doTERRA because I know that it's an environmentally friendly product. I know that their ingredients are ethically sourced. I know that um, it's going to be good for my hide because it's all natural. So whatever you choose to use, that's great. Just make sure that you're sourcing it in a way that the ingredients are natural and you're not going to have any chemical residue on your finished product. So once you've got your soap in there, basically you're going to be your own little washing machine. You're just going to come in along, agitate your hide, uh, just kind of work out there's going to be a lot of dirt in it and other things and so you're just trying to get it as clean as you can um, there will be chances to clean it down along the way so if you prefer to just jump right into flushing you can but I like to go ahead and wash it because while I have it on my flushing beam it's a good chance for all the water to drain out and for the hair to dry before I get it framed up and so I just like to get done with this part of the process, but really you can do it um, after you've dry scraped is another time when you can wash it before you start braining. So I'm getting ready to start flushing this bison hide and I just wanted to take a second and show you uh, my flushing beam set up so you can get an idea of what it is that I use. Now obviously there are a lot of different ways you can set up your flushing beam. This is just one way and I don't always use a flushing beam. Uh, sometimes I like just doing my flushing on a log, so I have a log that's laying here, and sometimes, you know, that's a great way to do it too. But especially for big hides, sometimes the flushing beam makes it just a little bit easier on your back. So all I have here is just your standard sawhorse. I just grabbed one that we already had, and we notched out just a little spot right there that my PVC can sit, and set the PVC pipe in there. And then so that it doesn't slide away from me, I just put a little shovel at the end. So this is super mobile. I put it away when I'm done, bring it out when I'm getting started. And um, yeah, it was pretty much made out of stuff that we already had laying around. So it is not necessarily like the best design in terms of efficiency or ease of use, but it works great in terms of using things that we had laying around and getting the job done. So I will show you what things look like once we get the hide up on the beam. 
So this is one of those moments that I really like having a sled for working my hides because I'm here by myself and I was able to move this wet bison hide over here to my flushing beam by pulling it in the sled, which is super convenient. So this is the hide once it's on the beam. And I usually like to arrange it so that I've got my ridge line kind of along the beam there. So you can see that's how I have this laid out. Like this is my tail and I've got all the way up to the crest there. And it just kind of helps me to keep organized. It helps me to get through the whole hide knowing, okay, I've done the front quarter, the back quarter. Uh, it just helps me as I'm working through, but there really isn't a right or a wrong way to do it. So as you can see, you've got kind of your thicker fat up along the crest. You've got thinner meat down here, kind of along the flank, and then some thicker stuff again. And uh, we're just gonna work all of this off, getting all of the meat and fat. We're not too worried about membrane, but definitely all of the meat and fat. You can see the butcher did a pretty good job. They did make some cuts that went through, and you can see that one there. You can see a little bit of hair follicle. That's a bummer, but there's nothing you can do about it. You can decide if it's deep enough and needs to be patched before you, um, get too far in your tanning process. Generally, I like to patch up holes after I've brained and before I move on to stretching. I'm gonna show you my tools here. This is just a basic flushing knife. It's an eight inch I got on Amazon. Um, I've probably flushed, <laughs> I don't know, 20, 20 or more hides with this. Uh, it's great. I like it dull. It kind of comes a little sharp, so be careful not to cut into your hide. I use it until it was dull, and I'm not going to sharpen it again because I like having it as a blunt object to just get that flesh off using a lot of force. Um, this is just your standard Mora knife. Um, I like this. I keep this super sharp. And so this is my tool for working anything off that my fleshing knife is having troubles with, working around edges, things like that. So those are my basic tools for fleshing, and I'll show you a little bit about kind of what my fleshing technique is when I'm working on a big hide. So this is where I'm gonna do my fleshing today. And generally how I start out again at the ridge line, and your hide is gonna wanna push off of your fleshing beam. And so usually what I do is I just kind of come up in here and just kind of press my belly against that PVC pipe. That's why it's nice to have the shovel at the end to kind of give you a little bit of resistance pressure. But I'm just kind of using my belly to hold that hide tight while I start fleshing. Just like that, I've gotten all of the fat and meat off of that portion of the hide. And then, usually what I do is I just kind of move my hide along and work on to the next spot. And so I'll keep on doing that, working my way around the hide until I get all of this meat and fat off. And the way I like to use my knife, you know, if I've got a bit that's hard to get off, you can come in here and kind of lift it up with your fingers. See where that membrane attaches the flesh to the hide and just kind of work your knife in along that membrane. You know, being careful not to cut too deep because you really don't want to make any nicks in your hide if you can avoid it. But that's another way, you know, that you can work that, that flesh and fat off of there. Um, so play around and see what technique works best for you. Those are the techniques that work well for me. So it's been a few days. We got this bison all flushed out and then I knew I wasn't gonna be able to get it in the frame right away. 
And so I went ahead and put some salt on it, as you can see here. And what I do to put it in the frame is uh, I go ahead and lay it out on a tarp. And I have my frame here, and you can see I have in my frame a bunch of little screws with a big screw head. And I'm going to show you exactly how I frame up this bison in that with that. Uh, design. But before we do that, I want to show you how I put holes in the hide for framing it up. So I've experimented with a lot of different methods, pocket knives, carving knives, a lot of different sharp things, and they're all really hard with these thicker, larger animal skins. And so what I have found works really well is a chisel and a hammer, and you just put a board under your hide, and you come along with your chisel, you want to be at about an inch in. You could be two inches in, but an inch is usually plenty. Every once in a while I'll have some that'll rip through, but that's more the exception than the rule. So I just set it right here and hammer through to my board. And there you go. You have a perfect little hole. You don't have to worry about it getting too big. You don't have to worry about the knife slipping. And I go about every five to six inches or so and put a hole in the hide. And then once I get all the holes put in this bison, we'll come back and I'll show you how I string it up in the frame. So now that I have all of the holes in my hide, I just wanted to point out to you something that I do. Uh, you really don't want your hide to dry out while you're doing this process. And so there's a bunch of different things that you can do to keep your hide moist. You can put blankets or towels all over it that are wet. Um, if it's not too dry, something that I'll do sometimes is just do what I did here and fold the sides in and then put a bucket or two of water on it. And you can see here there's water sitting on it and then um, this is all just laying in that wet water. And so it's keeping it soft so that when we start pulling it in the frame, it's soft enough to be able to stretch. So what I'm going to do now is lay it out flat again how we had it before and then I'm going to start putting my paracord through it. There's a lot of different paracord options out there. I just buy this roll of paracord. I think I got this at Home Depot for like five bucks at 75 feet. And to do a bison you're probably going to need anywhere between 150 to, I don't know, two or three hundred so get a few extras you can return them if you don't need them or save them for the next project I reuse them over and over and over so um, every once in a while I have one that gets worn through but for the most part it holds up really well and it's really sturdy so what I'm actually framing up I just take my paracord here and I put it through the hole I like to do skin side to hair side because otherwise you're gonna end up pulling a bunch of hair through, which is fine, but it just doesn't help your process any. And you go ahead and pull that through, and then where you're first starting, I like to kind of work from the spine side out, and so I'll go all the way around this side, and then I'll come back around and do the other side. Um, you really don't want to start tightening it at this point. You're just really loosely putting it in the frame. And you want to do that because when you do tighten it, you really want to tighten it from the top and the bottom and then the sides making sure that you really keep that spine straight because it just helps your hide to look better. So what I do here is I just bring it around and I'm actually not going to tie this one because this is where I'm going to tie in the other end when I come back around there. So you're really just connecting it here, putting it through the hide, bringing it back over here, catching your next, next screw and then going through and then putting that one through the next hole and you're going to do that all the way around. <laughs> 